John Blackburn and I started the Red Hen in the fall of 2008, and we lived in Lexington for a while and realized that the restaurants in town were sort of um, not had caught not caught on to the uh, farm to table movement, mm -hmm. all this sort of fresh foods, local foods thing. So we decided that it would be a really cool idea to take this beautiful little building and turn it into something like a little jewel, a little fresh foods jewel. And we sort of realized we live in this bountiful place, you know, the Shenandoah Valley is amazing for the kind of stuff it produces. And we didn't think that anybody was really taking great advantage of it. There was definitely a desire for something like this. It's the kind of restaurant, some people start restaurants and say, I have a concept and, it, and you're going to cook the food like this. John and I, since we're not chefs, we let the chef dictate the direction within the certain parameter. You know, it's kind of fine dining and it's you know, local and things like that. But it's really a stage for these people to perform on and it's, it's worked well that way. So we brought together a bunch of um, people who had a bunch of different kinds of talents. The Potter family, who you may know, they've been farming They've been cow farming for seven generations on this beautiful piece of land, and they have the slaughterhouse here. And their beef is as good as you could get anywhere, you know? And it's so amazing that they're here. And so there's a great relationship with them. This facility was a custom meat plant from the 50s to the 80s. At that time, the Donald family did not want to continue in the meat business, and they opened Donald's Electric, which is just right down here in our parking lot. So the Potter family needing the USDA processing facility at the time of the expansion of Buffalo Creek Beef, our branded beef program, went to the Donald family and said, hey, will you reopen the butcher shop so that we can have a place to process our meat? The Donald family agreed to be business partners with the Potters and reopen this as a USDA processing facility. We kind of consider Donald's Meat Processing to be the home of Buffalo Creek Beef. Um, because about 70% of the work that Donald's Meat Processing does is for our brand of beef program, Buffalo Creek Beef. Once we were here and we had a processing facility and we had a retail store, then we were basically open to the whole community. And at that time, we started partnering with the Red Hen. They were really looking for that whole farm-to-table concept, and we definitely fit that into that mold. Being in those restaurants really helps us sell the retail because there's a lot of people that go to the Red Hen and they say, oh my gosh, this is the best steak I've ever had. Where did you get this? And he'll say, oh, well, it's Buffalo Creek Beef. You can buy it right here in town. So um, they really help us advertise and promote what we're doing. I would say I probably talk to Matt at least twice a week. They not only get their beef from us, but they also get lamb from us. They get pork from us, and then they also source their chicken from us, too. So they, get, they do get more than just the beef, and because we cut different things at different times of the week, Matt tries to stay on top of where we're at, what we're processing, and then he puts in his request. My husband, he manages the farm and all of the livestock, and he brings the cattle and the hogs and lambs in here usually twice a week on Monday and Tuesday. They're then butchered here on site and then from there they're put into chilling coolers. All of our cattle when they're butchered are less than 30 months of age because at that point they're at a higher chance for mad cow disease and so we want to get them in here and get them processed at, at an age younger than 30 months. All of our carcasses are aged 10 to 14 days and we just think that that helps to tenderize the meat. Now our cow herd size is 200, um, but we need more than 200 head of cattle each year to fulfill our demand. So we use the calves out of our cow-calf herd that we can, and then we source from other farmers in the area to meet the demand that we need for our brand of beef program. Located 17 miles outside of downtown Lexington is Broadview Ranch, one of the local farms that utilizes Donald's meat processing and also provides meat to the Red Hen. This is family farm. We're working on our fifth generation here. And um, we raise grass-fed beef, pastured pork, and free-range eggs. We have 160 cattle, about 30 pigs, and 200 chickens. As of now, Broadview Ranch only provides pork to the Red Hen. They raise Berkshire hogs, which is a heritage breed and very lean pork. Of the ranch's 2,000 acres, about six or 700 are open, but the pigs are raised in the woods. 
Carol said she sends about two pigs and two steers per month to be slaughtered at Donald's, but is hoping to increase that number soon. In addition to providing for the restaurant, the ranch's main method of distribution is CSA, Consumer Supported Agriculture. Every month we fix a cooler of uh, pork and beef and eggs and do home delivery. We deliver to the D.C. area and to the um, Roanoke area and of course locally. Mm -hmm. And we're getting ready to open up Richmond in July. And so we deliver the um, cooler to people's homes and pick up last month's empty cooler. This is also a farm store and um, you can come here and buy me anytime. So this is our pork freezer. We have sausage, pork chops, tenderloin. This is our beef. It's grass-fed beef, so it's very lean. So that's a New York strip. And then this is our eggs. So those were gathered this morning. And then when we deliver to restaurants, we usually deliver in the baskets. This is 10 dozen eggs. Broadview Ranch does not currently provide eggs to the Red Hen. Instead, the restaurant gets its eggs from Paradox Farm, along with a variety of other vegetables that these farmers grow. So right now, we're pretty much only growing in our hoop houses. We're in like a huge transition from our fall crops into like short spring crops, and then soon to be followed by our summer tomatoes and soon as we can get them in here. This roof is like a double layer of insulated plastic, so it almost works like a magnifying glass and it reflects the heat. It just gets incredibly warm and the plants love that full sun and full heat and they like grow before your eyes. It's a wonderful, I love spring. Last year I was <laughs> technically the boss, but I was bringing Kat and Chad's interns up to speed as fast as possible so they could be the new bosses. So this year they are the new bosses. And so I'm pretty much hands off, I'm more of a mentor. We just started selling more stuff to Red Hen this winter since Chad and I started managing the farm. They buy a lot of greens, a lot of kale, they buy lettuce every week. Mitch actually goes into town and picks up compost buckets from all the restaurants that we sell to. So the chickens end up eating Red Hen scraps. We kind of make a nice circle of... It's a circle. We bring them fresh vegetables and we bring the old vegetables back here and throw it out for the chickens to eat. The Mondays... And Tuesdays we do our harvesting. We try and harvest as soon as we can to give us enough time to wash everything and bag everything, but not so that things aren't fresh. For the first time this year, we um, actually went around and interviewed all the chefs and we were like, what are you looking for and what do you use? Um, and I think Matt sent us like the best list. He was like, I like these things. And it was like a paragraph long. Yeah. And then he was like, but I can't use any of this. Mm -hmm. um, so he's just been really fun to work with. He's like, whatever's easiest for you. And I'm like, great, thanks. It's clear that many local farmers share Kat's enthusiasm about working with Chef Matt and the Red Hen. Joe Parent, the owner and manager of Sunflower Flats Farm, has been working with the Red Hen since the restaurant opened in 2008. There's been various uh, chefs come and go. We've worked with all of them. And um, we do a, a twice week delivery. He's put out a price list that may change through the week and of course through the seasons. They order from that and we deliver twice a week. This, this is one of our main hoop houses. It's unheated. These are scallions along the outside. They're a little more hardy and the more tender things like the lettuce will be in the middle of the hoop house. This is a kale along the edge. Right now kale is king. Carmen is a, a red pepper an Italian red pepper that we grow. We've had the most success with that. So all those that are in the ground come through here. And when they start filling in the, the container they're in, you know they're ready for more space. They're ready to go in the ground. We'll use cover crops and uh, compost instead of just chemical fertilizers. We use effective water use. We use drip irrigation. It uses about one quarter of the water we expanded our washing and prep and storage areas. We used to have just refrigerators. We'd put the produce in and then take it to town. And now we have a walk-in cooler, which is built here on the farm with my husband, who's a retired carpenter. And then we added our staging area here with all of our coolers and everything we need for the farmer's markets and boxes that we use uh, for distribution, you have to use new boxes, especially when you're selling to 
restaurants and stores. And that's one of the beauties of working with local restaurants and stores because they'll put our name there and then um, people will go to the farmer's market. There's two in the Rockbridge County area that we go to and they'll make that connection. And we do have a following. I'll have people stop me on the street saying, oh, I got some of your mixed greens, they're so good. You know, and that, that of course, always makes us feel good. Owner of Cheese to You, Meg Hall, has experienced a similar customer following at her artisan cheese shop in the heart of downtown Lexington. The bread and butter of my business are my locals. By local, though, I mean a pretty wide area. Uh, Richmond to Roanoke to really pretty far northwest as well. Often they'll come in and say, I want X, Y, and Z, which are the three things I know are at the Red Hen, so even if they don't tell me, the odds of them picking those three when I don't know them, I know 95% of my customers, so if a stranger walks in and they know what they want, it kind of trips some bells, you know. Meg's cut-to-order business has been the source behind the Red Hen's beautiful cheese boards for five years now. So basically I provide them cuts of cheese and do a lot of work with them about service and being able to store properly. and. So they email or text me every day and just tell me how many portions they want. And it changes every day. And we have similar philosophies, so everything I have will be free of hormones, um, free of pesticides, will be animals on grass. So it doesn't really matter what I send them because philosophically we're on the same page. My mission, um, which is very much hand in hand with the farm to table mission, is to preserve traditional foods by consuming them and proving that we're willing to pay for them. And the farm to table does the same thing with heirloom seeds and heirloom breeds of animals. Mm -hmm. It's really important that we keep our biodiversity yeah. because once it's gone, it's gone. Phil and Deirdre Armstrong have been taking advantage of the biodiversity on their six acre farm in Stanton since 2001. The couple sells unique microgreens and edible flowers to the Red Hen each week. In general, what we do is we send out an availability list every week via email and they respond with um, what they would like for the restaurant for that week. So we let them know what we have. When we have a crop that we know for certain we're going to be able to pick in a few weeks, we try to give them a heads up so that they can plan their menu accordingly. We started growing for Chef Matt of the Red Hen at the end of January of this year. So because it was late January when we first started working with him, it was the microgreens that we grow under lights in our basement, which are the equivalent of what you would think of as sprouts when you get the packages of sprouts from the grocery store, except that microgreens are grown in soil. Sprouts are grown in water. So the microgreens actually have that much more flavor because of being grown in the organic compost that we use. And then the other thing that he's been very excited about is been our edible flowers. Like right now we're picking violas and wild violets and the uh, red buds, those beautiful pink flowers, and uh, creasy greens, which are the wild mustard that you see uh, blooming on the side of the road right now. They're beautiful golden yellow. So that's what he's been working with so far. And then the other microgreens are things like pea shoots or a garnish pea. That is uh, called petite snap greens. And you can see how the leaflet is really beautifully dissected like this, so that makes a gorgeous presentation on a plate. This is a really succulent green. It's also known as miner's lettuce. Right raw in a salad, it can be used floating in a bowl of soup, for example. And a lot of people are familiar with this in its green form because it grows in your lawn. They're known as either oxalis or wood sorrel. These leaves are, are very lemony and um, just a beautiful little garnish. So this is a box of our edible flower mix. And we always label it so that they know everything they're getting. And here we have the violas from outside. This is a wild violet. This is called creasy greens or wild mustard. These little guys are wild pansies. And then these are red buds, which are in bloom all over Virginia right now. And then here is how we package the miner's lettuce. What we strive for is something that we bring to them that they can take right out of this box and put on a plate. Because when they have a busy service on a Friday night, they do not need to be picking through this stuff and figuring out what's good and what's not. So we try to make it all good. No matter what night of the week you dine at the Red Hen, your meal will always begin with a square of their fresh cornbread. Chef Matt orders the cornmeal from Wade's Mill in nearby Rafine, Virginia.
Uh, Red Hen's one of my favorite eating uh, spots, and we've been working with them several years. Uh, we supply a variety of things. Uh, the last delivery, we supplied some yellow cornmeal to them, but we've supplied uh, grits and other flour products. They're very good about buying local produce, uh, including the flour, and then turning it into gourmet delights. And I'm the miller. I'm the one who grinds the flour and gets it ready for mixing and bagging and uh, all the intricate things that go along with a milling process. And we ship all over the United States. We either use United Postal Service, UPS, or the post office. We are the sixth owners since 1746. The first family, the Kennedys, owned it until about the 1820s. The Wade family came to the mill in 1882, and they owned it till they sold it to us in 1991. When we bought the mill, Charlie Wade suggested we might want to have some of the product here. I would have to say we have done a fairly grade Z job of marketing. Luckily, the product is so good that word of mouth has spread it. The other thing that I think has happened in particular recently is the local foods movement has been just phenomenal, particularly in Virginia. We're a little chauvinist <laughs> and we love, you know, Virginia made products. And so it's really been successful. In addition to all of the farms that the Red Hen supports, Matt and Becca have also reached out to local potters at Earth, Fire, and Spirit Pottery to craft bowls for the restaurant. We were very first just customers of theirs. We ate there every chance we could get. And um, when the, their new chef came in, they came into our store and asked if we would be interested in maybe making some bowls for them to serve in. And we, of course, jumped on that because we love the Red Hen. What we do here is functional stoneware. It's things like coffee cups and casseroles that you can bake in and use. And then we also do decorative pieces like the ones you see behind me. This stuff is good for inside or out, so people use it to decorate their houses inside and out. Amber and her brother-in-law, Daniel, work together on every piece they make. Daniel throws the bowls for the red hen using three pounds of clay. First, he wedges the clay to get all of the molecules aligned properly. And then it's time for the wheel. Daniel works with his hands to mold the clay exactly how he wants it. Then he uses a rib tool to smooth out the inside of the bowl and get the sides rounded just right. Daniel always adds a swirl at the bottom to show people that the bowl was hand thrown and not made from a slip cast and eventually Amber decorates and glazes the bowl. The whole process start to finish is about two weeks. So the first firing it is in these kilns right here and those are electric kilns. And then these shelves go in and you put a layer of shelves in so you can stack too high. And so after it's fired in those kilns, we glaze it. So these are all our glazes. And this is what they look like when they're not, they're not mixed up, but that one's blue. Everything's natural. We mix all our own glazes. We don't use commercial glazes because we know exactly what goes into them. Mm -hmm. So when I look at my customers and say, it's lead free, it's food safe, microwave dishwasher, I can say it and know it for sure. And these are all of our colorants and all of the different chemicals, but they're natural chemicals that are yeah. found in the environment. They're just dug right up out of the ground. And after you glaze it, you fire it again in a gas kiln. So you can fit a whole lot of pottery in these things. That process is four to eight hours. And then they reach temp and you just shut them right down. One of the reasons why we wanted to do the bowls for them so bad, because the type of customer that dines at the Red Hen also flows over into the pottery loving, art buying people. So it was, it was nice to have that. We sort of think of it as this is the chef's stage. Every night is a show, you know, every night this curtain goes up, people come in and you do your best. I'm the chef at the Red Hen. Um, I have a kitchen crew of two other guys that work with me on a daily basis. We each have our own station that we specialize on. That being said, with three people in a very small kitchen, everybody kind of pulls together. This is the first kitchen I've ever worked in that has an open kitchen. I love it. I feel like it makes us much better at taking care of the customers, that we can see the customers, we can see how the dining room is flowing, we can feel the energy of a dining room. It's not two separate entities. 
We all want to do a good job. We all want to see happy people, you know, and that's that's our ultimate goal every night is to have that sort of energy where people are enjoying each other, like people are meeting other folks, you know, they're enjoying the pairing that we come up with wine-wise and food that they've never tried before. So that's, that's definitely my favorite part. As a team, we make that happen. We always feel like we're treated yeah. really special yeah. here. Right. Which is really nice. Right. It feels like almost like home. The, the, yeah, the cooking here is great. I mean, for us, it's the best food in town. So it's kind of a special event place for us, special occasion place for us. Just this past July, we got engaged, we married, and that, that all happened here. I brought a special bottle of wine and told Matt in advance, and they opened it and everything, and then he made a special menu for us. Mm -hmm. But the Red Hand is definitely the place to come for a special event mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. We wouldn't have gone anywhere else. We really try to take care of the people that are taking care of us. We love Lexington because there are so many farmers. There's so many places to pull from for um, meat and for produce. But what we really want to do is more than just farm to table. We want to be part of a community. You know, we want, we love the city the, of Lexington so much. There's so much to offer that we just want to be supportive.